In English, the first question is, in a word with two syllables, each one of them have their independent meaning and the overall meaning of the word is the combination of separate meanings of two syllables. So this is definitely false. You can consider for an example a word rabbit. So rabbit has two syllables rab bit. Okay. Each syllable has a vowel in it and this word has two syllables but uh, obviously bit has a meaning but rab has no meaning and on combine you can never know that it means an animal. Okay. So this one comes out to be false. Let's move to the second question. Second question says the vowel sound in a syllable plays a critical role in syllabification of a word. So this is gonna be true. Like I told in the last question, every syllable must have a vowel. And how do you count the number of syllable? It is basically the number of vowel sounds you hear in a word. Okay. So let's move to the third question. The third question is, what is the upper limit for the number of syllables in a word? For this, we are going to say that uh, there is no limit. There is no limit to the number of syllables we can have. And uh, the word which has maximum number of syllables, I guess it's the longest word in a dictionary. So yeah, there is no limit. You can definitely find six syllable words, seven syllable words easily. Okay, let's move to question number four. The word machine is a word. So machine is basically disyllabic. You can see it is machine. Okay, so let's move to the fifth question. Our fifth question is the word marketing has syllables. There are three syllables in marketing, which like I can represent as mar ing and you can clearly see each of them has a vowel. So our answer would be three. Let's move to the next question. Sixth question is which of the following has the stress correctly marked? So in case of stress, if we have a noun in most of the cases, the first syllable is stressed. So for sixth one, we are going to have the second option as the correct option product. Okay. Let's move to the seventh question. Which of the following has an aspirated stop? An aspirated stop is the one in which like if you end the word with a forceful expulsion of air, right? So uh, if you read these words, you can see in C option improve actually expulsion of air is taking place. So our answer would be C option. Let's move to the next question. Eighth question. In question number eight, it is given the output of dairy produce has suffered because of large herds of cattle being affected by the deadly flu. The dairy farm owners will have to take control of the situation to produce the adequate quantity needed for profit generation by the end of April. Okay, so here we can clearly see that... Uh, the two produced use one of the produce is a noun and the other produce is a verb so this produce is a verb and this one is a noun and for noun the first label is highlighted so this option cancels out and for a verb the second label is stressed so our right option would be this one and with that let's move to the next question Question number nine says the plural marker for the words stakeholders, stockouts and networks. So basically we know for T and K, it is obviously S sound. So our option, last option would be the correct answer. Okay, let's move to the next question. Tenth question. So the tenth question says the physician advised the nursing assistant to administer a daily dose of medicine to the child. He told her that a consultation with a pa pediatric specialist was advisable. Which among the following rightly represent the stress pattern in the underlined words in given sentence? So we can differentiate this very easily with the last word advisable. Right. If you see. For the words with suffix, we have the rule that we have to take the stress on the syllable right before the suffix. So here, able is the suffix. So just before that, v i s viz comes. And here, viz is not stressed. So our correct option would be second option and rest of it follows. 